we have this uh, activity uh, that we're running this activity, Vivian. I will have to share this with you yes. because I'm 100% sure you will want to use it in in uh, ASP. Yes. It's space detective. So the kids arrived today. They're going to spend a week with us, <gasps> and the activities. They there is a weird signal coming from somewhere. They don't know where, they don't know what type of signal, but it's something weird. And uh, they have to find out uh, what it is and where it's coming from. Well, that's exciting. And uh, a complete set of activities, including robots, coding, hands-on activities, uh, and things like uh, I put a, a, a glass and somebody else in a cord and I can hear, so yes. going radio waves, etc. So I think you're going to like the activity. That is wonderful, I can't wait. Very cool. So it's a challenge because one of the one of the persons one of the organizers only speak English. Oh yeah. So you have to translate. Yeah, there is, but some of the kids speak uh, speak English. So great. Oh, <laughs> it's good for everybody. I hope that person's learning some Portuguese too. He is. He is learning with my grandson. Oh, that's <laughs> the best way. <laughs> How is your son? He's wonderful. So good. He's, yeah, busy, busy. It's some. It's a winter vacation here, so we have two weeks off, and he's going to go to the camp in a minute. Ah, two weeks exactly is the same here. Same, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's nice. Um, yeah, it's great. He started kindergarten. He's a happy camper. <laughs> How old is him? Five. Five. He's too young. So young. Yeah. <laughs> So fun. All right. Um, should we hold on a few more minutes and see if anyone joins us and then? No, I think we, should, we could, if uh, Rosa, are you ready with the installation? I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. We could start uh, because uh, uh, I don't expect people to join this one much because of Christmas. Uh, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's sure. the break. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, we we'll, let's just start, and um, and then I'll post this video as soon as uh, David or you send it back to us. Got it. Okay, beautiful. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, Helena. Um, I am today presenting a, a quick activity. It's more of a demonstration on. Uh, representational color and this is from the NASA night sky network Rosa you need a little sign up that just says slow when I'm talking too fast <laughs> <laughs> I'll make like this like this. Yeah. Stop, stop. okay I, I have a tendency to talk too fast I apologize um, so this activity is is pretty simple and you can do it uh, with a group of students you can print out a couple copies of these. The things that you print out um, are a picture of a dog, um, a, oops, sorry. <laughs> there are uh, cards like this that you can, I just printed single-sided and then pasted them together. And then there are cards like this. Um, that have two sides as well. So these cards show the same image in three different wavelengths. Um, and then these here explain the differences for you. The, um, these are for the teacher and the cards are for the students. Okay, so it starts off something. You, there are a couple of different ways you can introduce it. You, I often talk about how we don't get to see a lot of light coming from the rest of the universe. Most of what we see, we only can see a very small part with our eyes. Um, we have very, very specific detectors that only see one kind of light. It's uh, in, the, um, in the webinar that this one accompanies, um, Travis, who was speaking, he had a great analogy. He said, it's like on a piano only being able to hear one key so pretend someone's playing a beautiful concerto and all you get to hear is every time they play c major that's the only note you can hear you wouldn't be able to see the beauty of this concert so 
Um, I love that. I love that. It was, I'm going to use that all the time. That was Travis. So um, I'm going to steal it as well. <laughs> yeah. I encourage you to uh, listen to that webinar. It was actually a fabulous webinar on how we use color um, to talk about astronomical ob objects. So I often start off and say, what can you tell? What can you know about by just looking at me? What can you tell? Give me, feel free to hop in and Helena and Rosa and Delina. It, what can you tell just looking at me? Happiness is the first <laughs> word that comes to my mind. <laughs> Beauty and happiness, friendship. Friendship, thank you. <laughs> uh, can you tell if I have any broken bones? No. 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 Can you tell if I haven't taken a bath in a week? No. Uh, <laughs> well, no. we could actually. Maybe we could. Maybe we could, but not immediately because we are not close by. Because <laughs> you can't smell me right there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, could you tell if I had a fever? Mm, you don't really. look sick. You don't yeah. look sick. <laughs> well, if you're a mother and you look to somebody with a fever, you <laughs> kind of know. <laughs> that is a very good point. <laughs> um, so, uh, in the same way, when we look out into the universe, we can only see a very specific part of what's out there, only the things that we can see with our eyes. So, when we look up uh, to the stars, we only see what do you look up? What do you see when you look up? What kind of things? I see mystery. mystery. It always wonders me when I look yeah. up and I, I try to, under, to, to, to position myself somewhere else and look back to our sun mm. and think, you know, try to relate things and see, wow, this are stars like our own. Right? Gee, yes. The universe is gigantic, you know? Yes. But I always think also about everyone living under light pollution that they yeah. don't have the same feeling. So true, so true. Um, the only thing, when I look up, I see the moon, right? I see just like the ones that I can observe with my eyes, the things that I can see with my eyes. I can see the moon, um, some stars. Uh, I sometimes. hope you see plenty of stars, but not there, right? Not here. <laughs> we have a lot of light pollution here. <laughs> um, but there's a lot out there that I just can't see because my eyes don't let me see them. Um, this right here is a picture of Rusty the dog. Now, from this picture, can you tell which parts of Rusty are hot? If I see it correctly, or can you show it again? Yes. No. Not really. No. No. Here we go. No, not really, no. Not really. Okay, so we use this thing called representational color. This is another wow. picture of Rusty. Um, is that a good angle to see it? Yeah. Very, good. very, very okay, good. Okay, so now we have a little chart right here that gives mm -hmm. us some information. Um, this right here, oops, the whiter parts say that it's hotter and the redder parts say that it's colder. Mm -hmm. So now can you tell? What parts are hotter on Rusty? Uh, is this the, the eyes and the mouth? Mouth. Yeah. Yeah. How about what part's the coldest? Can you see? His butt. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his little nose. He has such a oh, cold nose. nose. You're correct. <laughs> Good dog. Yeah. But, okay, so is that what Rusty really looks like when you look at Rusty? Well, it depends. If you are an alien and you can only see in infrared, then it's... Yeah. That's how it looks like, huh? Or if you're a bee, um, Rusty might look kind of like this. If you are... Some animals see in different kinds of light, um, not just the optical that we see in. So this is a representational picture of Rusty, and it gives us a specific piece of information, right? So this is um, taken in infrared. Um, which, is, which allows us to see heat. Uh, so we also take pictures in infrared in the, uh, for, um, okay, let me switch this, two shakes, so you get the right one here. Um, we also take pictures in infrared in space, and I'm gonna show you. We take pictures of lots of different- Selena, you might want to mute your mic. Oh yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can change around a little bit here. Mm. Okay. 
So this tell this um, shows us how much more there is to see. You can see down here um, so, uh, the radio waves will show us that there is cold gas and where magnetic fields are. Mm -hmm. um, the infrared that we were looking at with Rusty, actually when we look out into space, shows us where dust is, which is exciting. Uh, visible light is here in the middle, and that shows us stars. Uh, that's what we see with the visible light. Um, with the ultraviolet, we get to see hot young stars, new stars that have just been born. And then in X-ray, we start to be able to detect neutron stars and black holes. It's a very exciting thing. We can't see those with our eyes. That's something we need to use X-rays for. So um, we have a little game that we're doing. There's another, um, I'll say for the teachers, there's another uh, small amount that you can do with this. We have, because this was made in the US, we have pictures of the US uh, in different kinds of uh, here's my favorite one, in different um, representations of the thing. This is my favorite here. This is um, cell phone coverage, which is something that many of your students will be familiar with, maybe. <laughs> they will have seen pictures of, um, hmm, I'm trying to get a good angle on this, um, of where you have cell phone coverage in your country. So if you get a picture of your country with a cell phone reception, that can, that's a good example of representational color. Okay, but there's also others that have temperature and, oh, this one's a good one, natural radioactivity. You can, get, you can get pictures of your country in lots of different wavelengths. So the next thing that you do is you take these cards that you've printed out, um, you cut them up, you can have this, well, no, you can't have the students cut them up, you'll have to do it in advance. Um, and... You lay them all out and you see if they can pick out uh, the, the ones that match. So there are, there's an easy set if you're doing younger kids, and then there's an advanced set that are an additional four different objects that are harder. So Saturn is pretty easy because it's got the rings in all of its um, pictures. On the back, it tells you, oops, there you go. For example, it tells you that's the, in ultraviolet, you can see the aurora on Saturn. It tells you what you can see. In infrared, you can see warmer and cooler areas. So again, infrared shows temperature. So <clears throat> um, this is a fun way to get them kind of thinking about which, uh, what an object looks like in different wavelengths. And for the teacher, there's a guide that has the three different ones together, especially for the advanced set. Sometimes it's a little tricky. One of them I particularly like is a globular star cluster. Um, that's this line here. And my favorite is in infrared, you, there's no picture at all because there is no warm dust in an, a star cluster, in a globular cluster, because it's been around for so long. There's nothing new happening there. All the dust has been accreted onto the stars. Anyway, that's one of my favorite, but it's trickier for the advanced ones. And so on the back of these teacher cards, there's also more information for the teacher. You can get with some talking points and things like that. So that is the hands-on activity. And, um, and it's mostly to start conversations. Again, most of the activities we do are to start conversations about how, how we see the universe. That is actually a very good starting point to discuss life in the universe. How would you see life in the universe? And actually students ask all the time when you show different colors, colors in the universe uh, to, to, to discuss what is the universe really, really like? And you say, well, it depends with which eyes you're looking at, right? Yeah. So the, the, I have uh, very often kids asking me, but what is the truth? You know, what is the real thing? Yeah. It's the composition of everything. This is the real thing. Right. You know, it's putting everything together. But uh, it's, it's, it's hard to understand yeah. that uh, uh, the world is not exactly what you see. No. What you see is just that you, as you said, one, one little piece of the piano. So Yeah, and the lenses that you're looking through. <laughs> <laughs> and even, even the lenses are, you know, enhancing our capability, but uh, they still are looking in the optical. So there's right. so much that you don't see, but you don't have to go out there to see it. I mean, even in here, 
inside the room, around you, there's so much that we don't see, right? Yes, absolutely. If you think of how the bee sees the world, it's very different than the way we see it. They can tell, you know, which one has, um, I think the bees, oh no, the bees see an ultraviolet, don't they? I was going to say, there's some objects that see an infrared. Uh, I think they also see a, a little bit in infrared. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm not. I can't remember. That's not. I'm my, not 100 uh, yeah. percent sure. But the, yeah. in, in in fact, many insects uh, have a different perception of the world than than we do. Many, right. many. Right, right. Look at the, the flies. The way they have their eyes composed. Yeah. There's also another thing: is the 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 time that things will stick to your eye. So Ooh. we are always refreshing the image. If we would collect photons, we would be able to see farther away and uh, things that are not so bright. Correct. But uh, our eyes, eventually our brain would collapse because uh, we <laughs> see movement, you know? Like uh, I would see right. you doing like this with your head, I would see your head all around. So it would be oh, really nice. Right. right, we only get this exact moment in time. We can't see the stretch of time, yeah. That's the problem with three dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rosa, were you able to download Salsa J? Yes, 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 yes. Do you want to um, okay. share your screen? Sure. Do you, if, on the bottom, do you see if you put your mouse over, it should say share screen? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I need, yeah. So, but first I would like to say something that is very important. Usually yes. in astronomy, you know, there are this romantic view of an astronomer. You go outside, it's a beautiful night. You put your telescope, you look through the eyepiece of the telescope and you discover the universe. This is very romantic. And I think you also and Tilina, all of us totally adore this. This is not how astrophysics is done nowadays. You know, we, we, we can still discover a few things, but uh, we now have technology in our favor that allows us to go far beyond that. So we use telescopes that are connected to computers and they make the image and uh, the image is downloaded to, 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 to it's, it's done with the CCD camera, like the one that we have in our mobile phones nowadays, the smartphones or your, your camera, your photographic camera. And um, it's transformed, the photons are transformed into electrons and go to the computer and the computer will show you an image. So there are, astrophysicists out there who actually never saw through an eyepiece of a telescope. That's possible. You know, that happens. You have no idea how often that happens. So they see this beautiful picture in their computers, but uh, the, 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 the hard news is they're all in black and white. And uh, the color is given by the astronomer. So depending on what you're doing, you, you assign certain colors. So if it is in the optical, if, if you're using a red filter, you color it red. If you're using blue filter, you color it blue and green and so on and so forth. But if you're doing in infrared, what color will you use? And if you're using three wavelengths in infrared, you need to use three different colors. So this is basically assigned by the astronomer. It's there, there's more or less a code, but there's freedom to choose whatever you want. So I'm going to, to, to show you uh, the use of a software that's called uh, Salsa J. It's uh, the acronym of such a lovely uh, software for astronomy. And the J comes from Java, which can be a problem in some computers because of Java. But uh, there are plans to, to, to update it. But uh, meanwhile, you, you can install it. They have versions for Linux, for Macintosh, for, for PCs. And uh, it's, uh, it doesn't occupy a lot of space. And, uh, you, you, and you can play with a, a few images um, and produce a color picture with Salsa J. So Salsa J, it's a software that uh, is created um, using, um, so let me share my screen. I will share the whole screen. Okay, so um, it's using um, um, a software that is uh, Java-based uh, called ImageJ. It's a software that is used uh, by uh, medical doctors or biologists. They use it uh, very, very, very often. So um, this one allows you to mimic what astrophysicists are doing. And actually, there is some if you're doing re uh, some uh, types of research that don't require very advanced uh, uh, work with the images, you can still use uh, Salsa J. So what I'm going to do here, 
we have a collection of, of images to be used with Salsa J. And uh, at any point, if you are willing to have access to these images, just let me know. I'll give you the link. It's very easy to download. And there's a PowerPoint with some uh, instructions. And in the website, uh, uh, per se, there is what they call Salsa J cookbook, where you have the introduction to how to use Salsa J. So I'm going to, to open here uh, my, the folder where I have uh, the images. And what I'm going to do is I selected the three images of uh, a planetary nebula uh, that uh, was done in a, an observatory with blue, red, and green, in, in green filters. And I'm going to drag and drop the images in Salsa J. So let me minimize this. And here you have, this is the image in blue, this is the red one, and this is the green. And I am 100% sure you look at this and you don't see anything, right? Do you, Vivian? You don't see anything, right? No. Okay, so I'm going to make a trick, a little trick. I'm going to click in this one, click in this brightness and contrast window. And I will click in auto and let the computer do the trick. I will do the same in the green one. And I will do the same with the red one. Can you all see now the, 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 the nebula, the planetary nebula? So this is a planetary nebula that is the end life of a star like our sun. But it's all black and white. So I, I took it with the blue filter, with the green and the red, and it's all black and white. So let's make a color picture. Let me just pull Salsa J a little bit down. Otherwise, it's messing up with the control panel of the zoom. Okay, so now I go to image, color, and RGB merge. The software comes in many languages. You can use the language that, uh, that you want. Actually, let me show you here. You can have, uh, let's see, you can choose a language. And here you have the list. It's really very big of languages that you can choose. I won't change that because this is not my computer, so I don't want to mess it up, mess up with this. It's in Portuguese, I apologize for that, but the real one, the original one comes in English. So I'm going to image, color, RGB merge. And now I have to tell the computer because the computer does not know which uh, image I want to color with which uh, uh, color. So I'm going to, to click here and say, okay, paint the, the image whose name is in red, with red, the green one green, and the blue one blue. Okay, I will say keep the original images because I don't want to lose, I want to play with them a little bit more. And I click okay, and voila, this is the color image. It wasn't hard, was it? Okay, so this is how you make a color picture with Salsa J. So it's not hard at all, but you might just be lazy and say, okay, let me do it different. Image, color, and RGB merge, and I, I'm not doing anything. I'm not changing and I'll let it do its, its thing. See, now it's different. Let me do it again. I just closed the other one. I shouldn't have. Let me do, this is not correct. Okay, let me do it properly now. Red, green, and blue. Oops, sorry, I made it wrong. Let me do it one again, once again. Image, color, RGB merge. And then this one is the red one. This one is the green one. And this one is the blue. Okay, okay. This is the, the first one, this is the second. So you can play with it a little bit, uh, as much as you want, uh, to have your, uh, your color picture with uh, Salsa J. You can choose other objects, actually. You can do this with any object you want, any object uh, that you are familiar with, that you are, are used to, to play with, you can, you can do. You can do it with your, your cat, your, 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 I'm trying to increase the size, but I am failing miserably here. I want my computer. Okay, 
Okay, wow, well, you can see the, 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 the two of them somehow there. So this is very easy to do and has a, it has a very big impact on, on children. And actually, you can, you can uh, visit repositories of data. Maybe Vivian, you have some, some examples of repositories of data. I know the Las Cumbres Observatory, they have a lot of data that you can use. Ah, and if the picture, do, for some reason, do not have the information about the filter, uh, these are, are images that are taken with uh, from observatories. So, what happens is that uh, they come in a format. You see this FTS. It's a FIT file, and it's a format that is typical from uh, an observatory. And you can go to the image, and you can see information, show info, and here is all the information about the image. And somewhere here, you will see that the filter was the blue one. Okay, so if you go to professional astronomers imagery, you can find the information related to, to, to the image, which is, I mean, very useful if you're working with kids so that they learn how astrophysicists are doing their work. Okay, okay so I will stop sharing my screen. I don't know if you have any, any questions, even what do you think about this? This is amazing. Really, really cool. I want to try it out. Good. <laughs> There's so many images you can access with the FITS files that are, you could just play with. Precisely. It's really Precisely. fun. I will put the, the, the link to the, to the file where, oh, let me see, it's not this one. I will put a link to the file where you can find, uh, where you can find, uh, you continue talking, I will find uh, the proper link. Sure. And uh, I will put in here, okay? And let's, let's um, can you put in how to download image J? Exactly. So I will put both. Okay, great. Thank you. That's been so fun. We can put it on the website, the link as well. Okay. And people okay. can access it directly. Okay, well, that's uh, very quickly. So, Salsa J, you can find... Um, Delina, we can't hear you. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah. So as one of the things actually uh, when when you do public outreach, uh, and especially if you have a telescope, and if you, if, for example, if you're showing uh, Saturn or a nebula, and uh, so people have seen photos of these on on like TV, on social media, on Facebook, and. Uh, and and they come to the telescope most of the time expecting to see something really colorful, really and 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 at the same time the size as well, because they uh, you you expect to see something big and uh, exactly and but through a very like through a, a small telescope you see this tiny tiny object and, and it's white which is still, <laughs> yeah which is so interesting because you can see some details like especially if you if you observe a and you can see the rings which is amazing and uh, but i think uh, one of the things so i um, sometimes go i used to write a uh, lot of science articles to the local papers and if i use an image i always put the line saying this is a processed image with uh, false colors. And I think in, in some, some of the things we are doing, and especially uh, that when we are uh, places that publish uh, these images, like especially in popular uh, science magazines or, or even newspapers, and it's kind of the whole message about colors get lost and people don't really understand what they're looking at. And uh, and uh, so I used to do, add this line in every image I use, saying this is a processed image and so on. And uh, and I think we sh we should uh, and I think people should still use something like that just to inform people that what you're seeing is actually a processed color, uh, processed image. And otherwise, uh, obviously, when you do uh, public outreach, you come uh, so many. People have so many questions. Why? Why is this not colored? And why is it so so small? And and kind of disappointed as well. Seeing yeah. something so small, not colorful. That's exactly why we made this activity because we get that all the time. This is yeah. for amateur astronomers who do outreach and 
who get that question, why doesn't it look like the picture? <laughs> we also have switched, um, I don't know how it translates, but false color is something that is used often in English. And we have switched from false color to representational color so that people understand it's not a false color image. Yeah. And these colors, well, it's a, yeah, it, it has a different connotation that, um, that it, they are representing something. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we just, we've switched the name so that it doesn't feel that we are tricking anyone, but that we are actually representing something that we can't see with our eyes. Mm -hmm. um, in English. I put here the, the link to oh, Salsa yes. J, where you find Salsa J, and the, where you find the images in, the, in a, a PowerPoint. I have to say that the PowerPoint, I just made it uh, quickly a few years back. I never had time to go back and redo it properly in a professional way, but uh, I better put this than not put anything so you can find your way, you can navigate your way around. I should say too that um, the activity that we did has all of the images. There is a PowerPoint that you can use if you don't want to print all these out. You can use a PowerPoint to do the same thing and it has a, a script on there to kind of guide you through. And then you can um, just print out the cards uh, if you'd like to do that in a different way. So I think we translated uh, already um, uh, some of the material to Portuguese. Great. Uh, I don't know, Chilina is, should be the one who knows where to find the, the material in Portuguese. I, I have to confess, I don't know it. Chilina, yeah. can, you, can, you, can you please uh, tell us where to find it? Yes, uh, but we'll, we'll, so we we'll have a page uh, which I shared for the webinar and the webinar, will, that page will have all the links to the Salsa J uh, and the activity, uh, ac the link to the activity is already there. Okay. But the two links you just shared, uh, I'll add them uh, on the page as well. But uh, the, the link to the, the version in Portuguese is already yeah, there? So English okay. and Portuguese. Good, great. Thank you, Kalina. Thanks everybody so much. This was interesting. This this has been fun, you know, and uh, what one thing that I think uh, we have to do after we have a collection of webinars, so I can tell uh, people to be prepared, we can make a challenge. Who is going to implement a series of them and get badges or uh, win a prize that we might come up with? So start preparing yourselves. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see, uh, and everyone have a great holiday. Oh, uh, sweet holidays, we'll, everyone. Yes. yes. We'll see everyone in the new year. Okay, happy new year. Happy solstice. Oh, Christmas. happy happy new year to, to all of you as well. And uh, we will be good. we will be back soon. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.